One of the nice things about um, writing, I guess, is, is, is sometimes you can use it to um, just, just do something with your own fantasies. And um, I've, um, I'm somebody who's always had the flying dream. And it's always so terribly depressing when you wake up in the morning and you're perfectly convinced you know how to fly. And suddenly you feel your weight lying there in your bed. And you can't do it anymore. But um, I say that the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy has this to say on the subject of flying. There is an art, it says, or rather a knack to flying. The knack lies in learning how to throw yourself at the ground and miss. <laughs> Pick a nice day, it suggests, and try it. The first part is easy. All it requires is simply the ability to throw yourself forward with all your weight and the willingness not to mind that it's going to hurt. That is, it's going to hurt if you fail to miss the ground. Most people fail to miss the ground. And if they're really trying properly, the likelihood is that they will fail to miss it fairly hard. Clearly, it is this second part, the missing, which presents the difficulties. One problem is that you have to miss the ground accidentally. It's no good deliberately intending to miss the ground, because you won't. You have to have your attention suddenly distracted by something else while you're, when you're halfway there, so that you're no longer thinking about falling or about the ground or about how much it's going to hurt if you fail to miss it. It is notoriously difficult to prize your attention away from these three things during the split second you, you have at your disposal. Hence, most people's failure and their eventual disillusionment with this exhilarating and spectacular sport. If, however, you are lucky enough to have your attention momentarily distracted at the crucial moment by, say, a gorgeous pair of legs or tentacles, pseudopodia, according to phylum and or personal inclination, or a bomb going off in your vicinity, or by suddenly spotting an extremely rare species of beetle crawling along a nearby twig, then, in your astonishment, you will miss the ground completely and remain bobbing just a few inches above it in what might seem to be a slightly foolish manner. <laughs> this is a moment for superb and delicate concentration. Bob and float, float and bob. Ignore all considerations of your own weight and simply let yourself waft higher. Do not listen to what anybody says to you at this point because they are unlikely to say anything helpful. They are most likely to say something along the lines of, Good God, you can't possibly be flying. <laughs> it is vitally important not to believe them or they will suddenly be right. <laughs> Waft higher and higher. Try a few swoops, gentle ones at first, then drift above the treetops, breathing regularly. Do not wave at anybody. When you have done this a few times, you will find the moment of distraction rapidly becomes easier and easier to achieve. You will then learn all sorts of things about how to control your flight, your speed, your maneuverability. And the trick usually lies in not thinking too hard about whatever you want to do, but just allowing it to happen as if it was going to anyway. You will also learn about, you will also learn about how to land properly, which is something you will almost certainly cock up and cock up badly on your first attempt. There are private flying clubs you can join which will help you to achieve the all-important moment of distraction. They hire people with surprising bodies uh, or opinions to leap out from behind bushes and exhibit and or explain them at critical moments. Few genuine hitchhikers will be able to afford to join these clubs, but some may be able to get temporary employment at them. <laughs> <laughs>